First news, Obama's European trip was no coincidence, look what he just did right behind Trump's back over the past week, President Trump has been on his international trip, starting in Saudi Arabia where he then traveled to Israel and then on to Rome. Barack Obama and Michelle too have been vacationing over this past week, as they continue to use Air Force One as their personal taxi service to jet set around the country on the taxpayer's dime. While it seemed initially like the Obamas and the Trumps being in Europe at the same time was just pure coincidence, as soon as Trump left Italy, Obama immediately hatched his malicious plan to undermine and destroy President Trump's political international tour. Following the horrifying terror attack that took the lives of 22 concertgoers in Manchester earlier this week, President Trump was quick to speak out against the Muslim terrorists, unlike his predecessor who was always so eager to pander to Islam and embolden our enemies. As many people are now being violently shaken awake in the wake of the Manchester bombing, realizing that Trump is right with his calls to tighten our borders to prevent further terror attacks, Obama knew he quickly had to get control of the narrative, and fast. With the bodies of the massacred children of Mischester still lay in morgues, Obama hopped on a plane and headed straight to Germany to meet up with his buddy and fellow ISIS lover Angela Merkel, where the duo then held a public event where they disgustingly bashed Trump's calls for tightening borders, demonizing those in the audience who are still apprehensive about letting more refugees into Europe. Obama and true form then used children as a way to get the German people to accept his and Merkel's propaganda of open borders despite the recent terror attack where he blasted and demonized anyone wanting a wall as being callous violators of basic human rights. We have to push back against those trends that would violate human rights or suppress democracy or restrict individual freedoms, Obama lectured the Germany crowd. We can't isolate ourselves. We can't hide behind a wall, he said to cheers from the audience full of morons. Obama, the man who frequently turned his back on Christians who were being slaughtered by his precious ISIS terrorists throughout his two terms in office, then went into full blasphemy mode, invoking the name of God to further push his rhetoric onto the global crowd. In the eyes of God, a child on the other side of the border is no less worthy of love and compassion than my own child, Obama went on. You can't distinguish between them in terms of their worth or inherent dignity. Merkel's meeting with Obama was part of an event at the semi-annual Congress of the German Evangelical Protestant Church titled Being Involved in Democracy, Taking on Responsibility Locally and Globally, which stressed the role of faith-based organizations, Western journalism reported. Perhaps most nauseating of all was the rock star welcome that Obama received from the German crowd, who were all too eager to praise the very man responsible for creating ISIS as their country continues to go down the crapper as Germany is infiltrated with Obama and Merkel's precious refugees. Despite the fact that both British and French intelligence have evidence that the Manchester bomber had ties to ISIS, there's still not enough blood of children running in the streets apparently for the German people to wake the hell up, as it appears that they are just as freaking stupid as the liberals we have residing here in America. Obama's trip to Europe was in no way coincidental as this man has devoted his life as a civilian to taking down our president, while doing everything in his power to destroy not only Trump's presidency, but Trump's goal to rid the world of ISIS. Of course Obama can't have his eight years of progress of spreading Islam across the globe to be so easily dismantled by Trump, which is why this clown is now teaming up with treasonous hag Angela Merkel to bash Trump's plans for more border security. And anyone who gets in the way of Obama and Merkel's plans to transform Germany into an Islamic state will be labeled xenophobic Islamophobes, who callously don't care about the poor orphans and widows simply trying to flee their war-ravaged countries. Second news, Trump shuts NATO members up after what they were caught doing behind his back on live TV before participating in his first G7 summit tomorrow. President Donald Trump took a day trip to Brussels, Belgium to meet with the member of NATO. His publicized conversation with them was one of the many firsts this week he's had in his presidential role, but bigger than that was the verbal lashing he dished out on the world stage, and for good reason. Needless to say, the members didn't appreciate the public lashing as is proven in their response caught on camera as they stood behind Trump's back while he finally said what Barack Obama avoided for eight years. Donald Trump stood within feet of our NATO counterparts today embarking on an historic speech which ended up being one for the ages. When people don't pay their bills, they can expect debt collectors to relentlessly call and hound them until they do. While consumers are forced to endure this nauseating payment approach until they settle the debt, bills owed by government groups can go decades without being paid, 
despite the government being the ultimate form of annoying debt collection, i.e. the Internal Revenue Service, IRS. Today, President Trump paid the part of debt collector to unsuspecting NATO members who owe a lot and haven't expected to pay for almost a decade under Barack Obama. True to Trump's bold form, he outlined from his public podium how 23 of the 28 NATO countries are not paying their fair share into the NATO Defense Fund. As the speech continued it was clear that many of the NATO members were becoming very uncomfortable. They began to whisper to each other and chuckle thinking it's funny that the commander-in-chief would expect them to pay into the fund. The members all knew that they haven't been paying but no American president had ever called them out on it until today, for which it was not well received. Trump was definitely the man to do it, as a non-career politician whose only allegiance is to the American people, and didn't flinch at their smirks and whispering. In fact, their arrogant attitude only seemed to embolden his words and resolve on this important issue. Politicus USA reports an excerpt of Trump's sentiments to NATO today, these grave security concerns are the same reason that I have been very, very direct with Secretary Stoltenberg and members of the alliance in saying that NATO members must finally contribute their fair share and meet their financial obligations, for 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and what they're supposed to be paying for their defense. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. And many of these nations owe massive amounts of money from past years and not paying in those past years. Over the last eight years, the United States spent more on defense than all other NATO countries combined. If all NATO members had spent just 2% of their GDP on defense last year, we would have had another $119 billion for our collective defense and for the financing of additional NATO reserves. Trump could likely feel what was happening behind him in the shock, ah, and the fall of his statement saying that it's time to pay up on this long overdue bill, but continued in perfect fashion anyway. He made his intentions clear in this speech by demanding that each country contribute a minimum of 2% of each country's gross national product and added to it that delinquent counties will be held to repaying their debts. He told the NATO members that it isn't fair to the taxpayers of the United States of America to have to foot the bill because 23 counties want the protection but don't want to pay. The United States contributed 22% of NATO's budget which was $664 billion. No one else came close to the level of U.S. giving, 3.6% of America's gross national product, according to White House data. Trump's verbal lashing ended on a positive note as he spoke briefly about New York's contribution of a 9-11 monument and thanked Germany for their contribution as well. In his final comments he said that the new NATO facility was beautiful, but added that he didn't ask how much it cost to build and definitely doesn't want to know, which was likely in part to the massive unpaid bill people are refusing to pay which would definitely help with this cost. NATO members being bullish on their stance against American allies is nothing new and, Israel has been the hardest hit which is a nation close to Trump's heart and also a place he just departed from. Right after Trump became president, Nikki Haley was appointed as the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, who he enlisted her help in taking a strong stance against against this type of bullying. Today, Trump did the same thing to NATO as an example of his power and new precedents he's setting. He's saying that no longer is it America's obligation to cover people's bills especially those member who benefit from NATO but don't think that they have to pay for it. After today's tongue lashing, the world has once again been put on notice by a successful businessman who definitely knows what he's doing. The third news breaking, look what Trump just did when he found out who moved in his White House mole while he's out of town there's a mole in the White House who's about to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well, that's what the word on the streets is. If they're prosecuted is one thing. If they're found guilty is another thing. If this happens within 10 years is another story on a whole nother level. President Trump has made it very clear and concise in his warning that anyone leaking sensitive information will be busted hard. Democrats in the White House leaking info to other places that should not have certain information have set themselves up for future failure. If a Democrat ever wins the presidency again, then they should expect the same thing to happen to them. If Democrats are leaking valuable information out of the White House like water leaking out of a small crack in a water bottle, then they're harming the president and harming fellow Americans. This is how horrible the Democrats have become. They're butthurt, angry, crybabies, who need to grow up and work with the Republicans in order to bring America to an amazing place. 
working against the president and the GOP only causes further divide. Obama already created a racial divide while serving as a lackluster president, so can you Democrats chill out with the nonsense and start acting like adults once in a while? Do you want to get arrested? Because that's how you get arrested. Donald Trump pledged that those in his administration who are leaking sensitive information will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. In a statement Thursday, the president said he has asked the Department of Justice to launch a complete review into leaks, which he finds deeply troubling because they pose a grave threat to national security. These moles are so self-centered that they're willing to risk national security for their personal and party gain. It's almost June and we're many months into the 45th presidency and people won't stop crying about it. Look folks, no one really wants an orange president. However, we would take an orange businessman over a liberal Democrat crook any day of the week. If there's one thing about Trump that we like, it's that he puts US first and we don't have to worry about offending anyone. There is nothing worse on this planet than the politically correct, safe space needing, Fish face trigly puff meltdown liberals and cry babies. Liberals have become so mentally deficient and inept that they're no longer logical. Bring logic and facts to your arguments and check your weakling feelings at the door. These leaks have been going on for a long time and my administration will get to the bottom of this, Trump said in the statement. I am asking the Department of Justice and other relevant agencies to launch a complete review of this matter, and if appropriate, the culprit should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well here's an idea, Trump, stop everything and figure it out. Instead of pushing NATO people out of the way, in a friendly man-hug manner, you could be waterboarding a White House mole. Bring back the good old old-fashioned torture and get to the bottom of this. Waterboard everyone in the White House until someone talks. Meanwhile, if you see anyone practicing waterboarding on themselves in the event that they're caught, then you may want to check in on them. Attorney General Jeff Sessions echoed Trump's outrage over leaks in a separate statement, I share the president's deep concern and talked to Home Secretary Rudd yesterday about this matter. These leaks cannot be tolerated and we will make every effort to put an end to it. We have already initiated appropriate steps to address these rampant leaks that undermine our national security. What's the point of leaking information? Why don't both parties team up and work together and make our country amazing? All the bipartisan nonsense and fighting with each other only gives the mainstream media something to talk about that further divides people and forces guys like me to call people kooks. I'd like to see some compromise and progress on teamwork. So many jobs in America force people to work as a team, but the people who run the country don't work as one. Does everyone in the White House need some teamwork training? I'd suggest a hunting trip, but we know how that turned out, right Dick? Maybe the White House employees can do one of those grow up paint nights together. Can you imagine everyone painting the Trump wall at the border of Mexico? Hilarious, right? Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.